Okay, uh, in this video, I'll be assembling a uh, chicken CO2 euthanasia device uh, per some instructions provided by the uh, Alabama Extension Office. Um, chicken, CO, uh, excuse me, chicken euthanasia via CO2 is a USDA approved method uh, to humanely uh, euthanize a chicken. Um, it's a little less hands-on and um, for lack of a better term, violent than some other methods such as uh, cervical dislocation where you're uh, basically uh, pulling the head away from the body and snapping the neck or severing the spine. It's a very hands-on method. And if you don't do it correctly, you can cause much more suffering to the chicken. Um, other ways of you know cutting off the head, um, you just have to do it accurately and sever the head completely and it's, there's a lot of blood involved with that. Um, so CO2 uh, is uh, another method that is available. Um, the instructions from the Alabama Extension Office, uh, the PDF um, website and uh, video that they provided is in the comments, or excuse me, in the uh, description below. Um, so the materials you'll need um, are a 20 ounce uh, CO2, uh, container, uh, our CO2 tank, the, uh, a lot of paintball um, uh, guns use the CO2. I guess that's starting to go away, so um, you can still get the 20 ounce paintball ones, but um, uh, you can also get some through like a, a CO2 canister through a gas company um, or other means. Uh, besides the paintball ones. Now, if you do get the paintball ones, you are going to need this uh, adapter. Uh, it is a, uh, let's see here, it is a paintball thread CGA thread adapter. Uh, there'll be links to all uh, the materials here in the description below as well. Uh, you'll also need a low pressure series primary gauge uh, CO2 regulator. Uh, half gallon to three quarter gallon uh, clear container, um, three eighths inch inside di uh, diameter tubing, uh, half inch outside di diameter. So uh, three eighths inch diameter on the inside, half inch on the outside. Um, so I actually got the wrong one of these. I'll show you the right one a little later. But basically, a a, a barbed three eighths inch. Um, MIP elbow, uh, nylon one. Uh, I got the right one with the barbed end, but the other side needs to be a threaded end. So I'll show you that later in the video. Uh, then later, you also need some uh, a gallon storage bag, uh, some packing tape, shipping tape, and also uh, one or two zip ties. As well and then you'll also need a, a 28 inch uh, traffic cone uh, that will be to hold the chicken and something to hold the cone upside down as well uh, I built this uh, just simple structure and the the Alabama Extension offices uh, video they show a bottle carrier uh, which you can purchase as well uh, I uh, link some in the description below uh, but I just made this simple um, uh, device here to hold the the cone, basically. Uh, I'll probably secure it here at the top with some screws and then put some tape around it. Put this 2x4 uh, board here just to give some space uh, between the board and the end of the cone as well. So just at a slight incline and that's to hold the chicken in the uh, in the traffic cone. Um, if you look at the uh, Alabama Extension Offices video, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, I'll show you how we go ahead and assemble this. All right, uh, first thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna take this traffic cone and I'm going to make uh, an opening here where the chicken's head uh, would come through. In the uh, Alabama Extension Offices video, uh, they have a little cutout here that they made for uh, what they have set up. What I'm probably going to do though is make it a little bit smaller than what I'm guessing that they did it just because um, I can always make it bigger. Um, but uh, if I make it too big, then it's too big. So 
I'm um, gonna go probably about approximately four inches here. I'm just gonna go ahead and mark it out here. Uh, maybe go a little bit bigger there. And then uh, I'll take my utility knife and go ahead and cut this. Okay, uh, I got an opening cut as you can see. And that is pretty much that for this step. Okay, next I'm going to make, uh, take my half gallon container and with the lid here, and I'm gonna make an, an opening uh, in the lid as shown in the Alabama Extension Offices video. Uh, this is where we'll eventually attach the Ziploc or storage bag to. Uh, there's a hundred different ways you can make this opening. I'm probably just gonna use a utility knife and cut around there uh, you could take a like a dremel saw and probably cut it through take a drill and just drill a bunch of holes and then cut it out so however you want to do it and there is the opening for the lid to the container so we are going to make the hole in the uh, container here uh, for this i got the correct piece here this time this uh, 3 8 inch uh, barbed end by quarter inch threaded end elbow, nylon elbow. And we're going to drill a 3 8 inch hole into the side of the container here. I just put some duct tape here when I'm drilling just to prevent any cracking. Any cracking um, that may occur just as a prevention. Um, normally I'd probably use painter's tape, but just didn't have any on hand. But duct tape should work. I got my hole in the container. And uh, I actually ended up having to use a, a half inch bit. Uh, for this in order to get this to go ahead and fit in there but uh, just go ahead and push this in and then just start screwing it in so it is right up there all the way in makes it a nice seal and there we go Uh, we're, we're going to take this uh, gallon sized uh, Ziploc or storage bag and then attach it to the uh, lid with the opening. And from the video, uh, Alabama Extension Office, they have the bag uh, essentially going over the lid, kind of like this. And then they take some uh, packing or, yeah, some packing tape and tape it up. So that's what I'll be doing here. All right, uh, I got that lid attached to the Ziploc storage bag. It was actually a little trickier than I thought. Uh, but basically what I did was I put some packing tape uh, along the top of the lid with some of it halfway on and half it off. And then put the bag over, folded it back under, and attached it that way. And that seems to, to do well. So we'll then take this and attach it to the container. Okay, and then I uh, got the lid attached, uh, reattached to the container. With the Ziploc bag, you will have to kind of push a little bit harder to get that uh, uh, lid back onto the threads and everything. But uh, it holding nicely. Uh, we'll want to, if you have the uh, paintball CO2 canister, get the adapter and attach it to the gauge. Uh, you want to do this first because if you put the adapter on first, it'll you're start leaking all your CO2. So put the adapter onto the gauge first. So just simply screw it in there at the bottom. Uh, hand tighten and then you just may want to take a, a wrench to make it nice and snug. Okay, and next we'll want to put our gauge onto our CO2 canister. So just... Go ahead and get that screwed on the top. And as you can see by the gauges, um, uh, we are working here. All right, and here would be your final uh, setup for everything. Uh, so we got the traffic cone there the container with the Ziploc bag attached 
Then we got uh, the clear uh, tubing attached at this barbed end and then the other barbed end at the gauge. Um, I could probably cut some of the excess here, but anyway, uh, this is how everything should basically look uh, when it's done. Uh, again, uh, for actual instruction, oh, I guess also in the beginning, I showed you the Ziploc uh, tie, or excuse me, the zip ties. Uh, that's just for when you do have the chicken uh, in the cone, it's to uh, wrap the uh, Ziploc around their neck very loosely, not tightly. But again, please follow the Alabama Extension Office's uh, video for actual instructions on how to operate this. Uh, the, again, the link is in the description below, along with links to all the materials uh, that were used to put this together.